Okay, hello. Uh, we're gonna get started here. So I'm gonna go through something that I already covered on the live stream, but just show it again because there was some music in the background and I just wanna have it recorded clean. All right, so let's take a look at this. All right. Um, Hi, it's Nono, and I'm just gonna go through what this uh, tutorial covers. So this is a tutorial for um, visualizing convolutions with TensorFlow. So TensorFlow allows you to do deep learning, machine learning, and many other operations with tensor and matrices and many operations. Here, what we're gonna see is a really, really simple model. So building a TensorFlow model from scratch that just contains an input image and a 2D convolutional, convolutional layer. There's more that we will see. So we're going to create a simple model. Uh, the, the filters that are called inside of the convolution, we're going to have 64 filters with a three by three uh, kernel size that's going to generate something like this from every input image that you feed through the model. We're going to export the model and visualize it, it with uh, net Netron. So Netron is an electron cross-platform application that you just have a drag and drop interface. You drag and drop a model that you've saved from Keras or TensorFlow, and then you can visualize it as you can see here. And we will convert the model to TensorFlow.js um, with TensorFlow.js converter that can be used both on the command line or as a library inside of a notebook or Python code. And we'll feed the model with the live, cap feed, live webcam feed in TensorFlow.js. This is just a simple application that gets uh, served with a static website gets served with HTTP server. That's an NPM package. And, you know, we'll use JavaScript using ES uh, 2015 um, syntax, um, getting it transpiled to Laravel Mix to be able to run a browser and simple HTML5. This is the output. So it's like in, in the example that I created, you can see this happening live. So as I move on the webcam, the kernel uh, of the com the kernels of the convolution, so the different filters are visualized there. And yeah, so that's it. So let's get coding. So, all right. So the first thing I want you to do is just go to colab.research.google.com. So this is uh, the free notebooks on the cloud with GPU and TPU support uh, from Google. And you know, if you wanna get more longer run times and other nice features, you can subscribe for $10 or $9.99 a month, but this is completely free. So first thing we're gonna do on the run type, we're gonna select GPU and you're just gonna name this after. So uh, visualizing uh, convolutions version two. And the first thing, I'm just gonna check the, the Python version here. Mm, you're gonna get 3.6.9, I think. And we'll check the TensorFlow version that we're running. The first time you run, we need, so the machine needs to allocate for you RAM and disk, so a machine. And now it's allocated, so we can test that this is working by using TensorFlow convert to Tensor and just passing an array of um, numbers, right? And here we'll see we've created a two by two matrix. So uh, two in height, two in width. And when this executes, right? So you just bring the tensor there and you can see that the tensor shape is two by two and this is the matrix we just defined. Okay, so it's working. So the first thing we're gonna do is uh, create a model. So TensorFlow, um, Keras, model, um, models uh, sequential, right? And now we'll just get an error there if because we haven't built the model. So we could build the model and get a, a model summary, right? We don't have an input layer, so we do add a tfkers layers input, and the shape is going to be 100 and 28 by 128, and the name of this layer is gonna be image. So now we have a model. Um, it gets an input image of 200, 100, 
Okay, many errors here, but yeah. So the model doesn't really have any internal layers. It just has first layer that gets an input image of 128 by 128 with three channels. So the RGB channels, and we're gonna add a, a convolutional uh, to the layer with, uh, let's try just first with one filter and the kernel size being three, right? So uh, you can see, blah, 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 conf to the, conf to D, right? Two dimensions. So we're gonna get one filter created by this layer and uh, we're gonna be able to visualize that now. So the model is built and we can now run model um, dot predict on an input, right? Well, this is uh, X is not defined, but just know an empty array index is out of range. So we need an image uh, that is of, um, you know, converted in size, something like this. So it's a batched image with a high 20, 128 width and three channel colors color channels. Uh, so first thing we're going to do, we're going to download an image. So for that, I'm going to go uh, look for an image URL. So I have a, a URL here. Um, let's just use that one. So we're going to download that with curl and it's going to be called kanken.jpg. And just to make sure it's there, we're going to do LS after we download it. Right, so the image has been downloaded and now we just need to load it with uh, TensorFlow. So we just read the file that is at kanken.jpg and now we need to decode this that is a, a JPEG and we'll say that we have three channels and now we have to uh, convert the image D type to uh, flow32. Right. And lastly, we um, we resize the image to be um, 128 by 128. Right. If we print here the image shape and then we print it here. Right. You see that the image we load has its own size. So this is a height and width. And then we just resize it. So we squeeze that down. Um, all right, so here we do have an image that is of this size and we if we try to fit it here, we won't be able to because it's not of the size that we set. We're missing the fourth dimension. So everything we need to do is um, just define that input. To define that input is span dims of image in the zero dimension and then input. So that is actually going to be fed through the neural network and we're going to get an output that is just one filter of 126 by 126 pixels. Um, we can get that here. So prediction and we can do prediction dot shape. Right. So how do we just get the first one, right? We just get the image and then we have the image and then we can do import matplotlib plus plt we do uh, plt image show prediction zero and then we do show we're gonna get it colored so um okay for image data so we have just one um hmm Hmm, so here actually we need to to do that. Um, ah, right, so we get the prediction and now we gotta get... All right. Yeah, so this is a weird 
syntax. Mm. Sure, if I can just do that. Okay. So, so what's going on here is that we are we're grabbing the first um, the first filter out of those uh, sixty four filters that are being generated, but the prediction actually contains them all. So the thing we can do here is that. Is visualizing the entire thing. Right, so these are the 64 filters that we're getting. Um, Matplotlib is using the, uh, a color map that comes by default, but you know we can use the Inferno color map, for instance, or any other. There are tons of them that you can call them by name. And we're just gonna use the gray one. So that's a bit boring, but you know that's, that's what we're getting. So this convolutional, 2D convolutional layer is performing different um, kernel operations or different convolutions. Uh, we can see here, um, you know, when when we have, uh, let's see, you see, so the kernels themselves are uh, operations, right? So you can see that if this kernel gets applied to this image, we're going to get this output, right? And, you know, there are many different kernels. So the kernel size is three by three and there are 64 different filters that are being used. There's like a ton of literature on how to, so how this operation is performed. It's like a sliding window with a kernel operation that gets applied from this input with this kernel, we'd get this output, right? Um, so one, uh, we get one. So here, for instance, you see, if we apply this kernel to this part here, right? This kernel to this part here, you can see one by zero is zero, one by one is one, and two by three is six. So six plus one equals seven, right? We will go doing that uh, around the image, and then we'll get this. So you can see that here uh, we have a, a five by five image, and we get a three by three because there's a padding outside of one that gets um, that, that goes away because this kernel is uh, three by three. Uh, so that's the operation. Those are um, uh, convolutions that get applied to an image and they're really useful for image classification because what they're actually doing is uh, extracting features from the image. And as you can see here, uh, some of them have um, edge detection or like other sort of um, applications that, that get done there. Uh, so yeah, this was the the first part of the um, of what I intended to show. So we've covered um, we've covered up to to here. So we've um, we've done this uh, operation here uh, with an eight by eight matrix of of filters and convolutions. And you know, just look at part two to see to see what's next. That is um, how to. Um, well, I mean, this part actually, I won't do it separately. So for this, the only thing we need to do is uh, do model safe. So we can do model dot h five. Um, as you can see, that gets saved to to the same folder. So it gets saved here, and you, we could do it through the UI. But I find it cool that we can do uh, from Google call up import files, and you can do files download uh, model dot h five. So these 
actually uh, you can see it downloads the um, the file right downloads that there um, and now this file that I have here I can directly open it in Neutron so Neutron will open here you see and I can I can visualize the, the neural network here of the model, the TensorFlow model. And yeah, so I mean, you can see, you can see all the options and the names that you put to the layers and the input sizes that, that are expected to, to be fed to this, to this model. So once again, so we've covered points um, one and point two of this. So we still have to see how to convert it to TensorFlow.js, um, to feed the model through the live webcam feed and to build this uh, live application. So yeah, I, I hope that you, you enjoyed this and uh, are looking forward to see the next videos. If you like the video, um, please subscribe and maybe leave some comments on what you thought. And maybe some comments as well of other tutorials or other things that you would like to learn or maybe get a bit better, more, more clarified. Thanks so much for watching this and I'll see you next time.